Hey, Computer Solutions class, this is Mr. Lupton. Welcome to week two of the course. Uh, and this week, as I hope you saw in the announcement, we are going to be working on uh, creating a research paper. Now, I say that, and that tends to send chills down the spines of high school students. Um, so let me just start by saying, don't worry, don't panic. We're going to take this one step at a time. We're not going to try to do a whole research paper in a week or anything like that. Um, we're going to give ourselves plenty of time to get this thing done, and we're not going to make it a um, like a huge research paper. You know, I'm not looking for like five page papers from everybody. Um, it's going to be you know relatively concise. Um, you know, somewhere I think between one and two pages is going to be about the right amount for this. But really, what I'm more concerned with um, is the process, because the reality is for for most of us. Um, that go on through high school, and then if you go on to um, college of any sort, you're going to have to be able to research information and put it together uh, in a format that is easily understood by other people and that is appropriate based on the, the formatting standards of the discipline um, that you're studying. So what I mean by that is like when you guys learn this stuff in high school, um, typically you learn something called MLA format. Um, and so we're going to focus on MLA format because it's my, my understanding that's still what you guys use in high school. Um, but as you get into college, depending on what you study, if you study science, uh, there's a different format than MLA that they use for science. And if you study humanities, there's a different format they use for humanities. And, and there's a number of different formats that exist depending on your discipline. Uh, so what I want to do is, again, just kind of walk you guys through the process that we're going to use for this. Uh, and then ultimately... Um, look at how to put it together in a way that makes sense uh, based on MLA format. So um, we're going to go ahead and get started here, and I'll explain what you're doing for this. Um, so for the research project, we need to start um, by picking a topic. Uh, and so you can see in what I've written here to you guys, the topic that we're going to pick for this project, um, at least what I'm going to pick for this project, um, is going to be about soccer, and it's really going to be more about the history of soccer. Um, but you can pick any topic you would like. Um, certainly, I don't, I don't want to see everybody do the history of soccer. I want you guys to do um, a topic that is interesting to you. So it doesn't have to be academic in any way. It could be um, a history of your favorite character from a, um, a television show or whatever else that you might watch. Or it could be um, a, a hobby that you're really into, kind of like soccer, or if you want to do something academic, you can, you know, if you're reading a book in English class and you want to write a, a research paper about that book or on the author of the book or what other people have had to say about the book, um, those are all, all fine approaches as well. Um, so uh, that was step A. That's the easy step is really picking, picking what topic you want, but it's the most important step really because uh, we can't go anywhere else until we have that. Um, and now the next step we're going to do is we want to find at least three resources, and you might find more. Um, so as we go through this, I'll show you how to add rows to this if you find more resources. Um, but what I'm going to do right now is go ahead and open up a new tab, and in my Google search, I'm going to type in history of soccer. And you're going to see the kind of typical results come up. Um, so the first one, uh, I've got some pictures up here and the records tracing back soccer to ancient China. Um, but what I'm going to do before just clicking on the first link is I really want to look at um, the reference, where, the, where this link is coming from. This, this is something called athleticscholarships.net and the history of soccer football. So that could be good, but I don't really know anything about athleticscholarships.net. So I'm going to just kind of look through here um, and see if I can find something that's maybe a little bit stronger of a reference. Um, so I have footballhistory.org. Um, so that could be a good one. So I'm going to go ahead and open that one in a new tab just to hold on to it for a second. Historyofsoccer.info, Wikipedia, which sometimes Wikipedia is fantastic, but I'm going to hold off on that one for right this second. Um, I have some videos here. Actually, I think I probably will want to use a video um, for one of these things. Uh, so as I look here, we got some History Channel videos going on. Um, which could be interesting. And then we have the history of football in 90 seconds. That could be entertaining, although I don't know how informative um, it will be. Uh, let me look here and see what else we got. Soccer in the New World Part 1. It's from Keep It in the Family. I don't know about that. Um, 
History of Soccer, the Super Scout. So that seems to be a big series um, of something on the History Channel. Um, so I'm going to leave that one alone for the moment, and I'll come back to videos in a second. So let's keep looking down here. And as I go down, I find, okay, I have Britannica. So that's Encyclopedia Britannica. So I know that's going to be a legit site. Um, encyclopedias are good places a lot of times to look. Uh, and then I have National Geographic. I know that's a legit um, business. So I'm going to open up that one and make sure I knew the AU at the end um, means it's from Australia. Um, but that should still be um, okay here. So you've know, got National Geographic and Britannica as it opens up. Yeah, this looks like the Britannica site. And then uh, footballhistory.org. We're giving that one a shot. Now, the fact that I didn't pick some of these other ones doesn't mean that you can't use them. It just means be a little bit weary, right? Like, if you have a humorous look at the history of, of soccer or football, that might not be a great um, great research paper type site. But, you know, again, I, I think you could probably use the Wikipedia entry, probably use the history of soccer on .info entry to get what you need for this. Um, and I did say I wanted to find a video, so I'm going to go ahead and flip open the videos here. Um, and let's see here. So I clicked videos and here's a little three minute video. Um, where did soccer start? And notice that's purple. So I think that's actually the same one that I have right here. So that's actually works out really well. Um, so I can actually use that video as my video as well as the information uh, in this article. Um, so I could do that or if I wanted to, um, again, I could kind of come down here um, and I could look for maybe something else. Um, the open book might be an interesting one, so I will just open that up just in case I decide to use that. Um, all right, so now that I've got my resources, the first thing I want to do is record which ones I've found that I'm pretty interested in. Let me not use that. Um, let me go here to resource number one. So this is my historyoffootball.org site. And the next one is my Encyclopedia Britannica, so I'm going to that URL and paste it in here. And then I'm going to go over to my National Geographic site and copy that and put it in here. And I told you, you can add more resources this as you need. All you do is when you're in the last box, click the tab key on your keyboard and you can put in resource number four. And that will be where I put in uh, my history link right here. I'll pause that for the time being. Paste that. Um, and now the next, and really this is the last part of our note taking for this week, is I want to um, actually take the notes on what I learned from these different resources. Um, so I'm going to come down here to uh, the history of football on footballhistory.org. Uh, and I'm going to kind of just outline the information that's in here, right? So um, as I look at this, I'm just reading the first paragraph here um, called Soccer in Some Parts of the World. Yeah, long history is. Yes. Uh, it arose in England in the 19th century, so that's a pretty important point. Uh, so I'm going to summarize that and put a bullet on here. Modern football or soccer came out of England in the mid 1800s. And good, right in there. I should put that in there. Okay. Um, come back here and really this is the whole point of what I'm doing here right so I'm going to get about three four maybe even five bullet points um, to get to show you guys the idea that we're going here going for here um, so the first known example is of a team game involving a ball which was made out of a rock that does not sound like a lot of fun um, occurred, occurred in old Mesoamerican cultures over 3,000 years ago um, so that would actually be another good point here. First, again, team games involving a ball happened 3,000 years ago in Mesoamerica. So we might have to look up what Mesoamerica means if we don't know that, but I bet you guys can probably figure out um, what, that, what that means. Um, all right, and we keep coming down here. The first known ball game, which involved kicking, took place in China in the third and second century BC. So, first ball kicking 
thing happened. And second and third century BC in China. Let me go back to the page that we're on. Um, and other early forms were in ancient Greece. So they have leather balls filled with hair, ancient Rome. Um, not including big arenas, but could incur with the military. Um, and let's see here. The Romans actually brought football to the British. That's a pretty important point, right? Um, early form of soccer happened in Greece and Rome. And then we actually have Greeks brought soccer. At least an early version of it to British Isles, which we noticed here is where the game actually started. Um, so we have some interesting things going on here that we really want to highlight, right? So I'm going to actually highlight um, England in the mid 1800s. I'm going to put a highlighter on that guy. And then 3,000 years ago in Mesoamerica, same thing. I'm going to highlight that. So we're starting to build. Um, actually a bit of a timeline of things that we want to know. So 3,000 years ago would have been about um, the first century BC. So really the second and third century BC is right here. So we might even come here and put like a one next to that and a two next to that. And this one actually is probably going to end up being um, about a four because we're going to highlight Greece and Rome here. the third place um, we saw this happening and then this point is actually connecting to the first point um, that we see so I could even change the text color of my British Isles here in England to connect those ideas so as we're kind of reading through this we're also we're not just reading it we're also connecting the ideas um, that we see happen in here so I would, I would continue doing this and go ahead and, and take my notes on this, um, this idea. And again, you don't have to have everything. This is obviously a very long article. Um, so you would really want to limit this down to, to kind of the big ideas, right? So um, reading through this section about the game taking its early, um, early forms in England, uh, some important pieces here might be that the game was much more violent than the modern way of playing uh, the game, uh, and that there were um, lots of people that played this game. Um, and again, so on and so forth. So I'm not going to take the time to go through all of my notes here, but I'm going, again, showing you guys the, the model that I want you to use. Um, so after we do resource one, we'll jump on to resource number two. Um, and we see an important point here. Football was also called association football or soccer. So again, I'm going to put my bullet points in here. Football was called association football or soccer. Uh, so some big ideas here. This idea of association football is interestingly enough where we get the term um, soccer from so we didn't make that up in the u.s even though we're basically the only country that uses that the british actually made up the term soccer and we, we used what they had made um so it goes over some of the rules here two teams of 11 players only the goalkeeper is going to be able to use his hands each team is trying to kick the ball into the other team's goal or just get the ball in the other team's goal by any uh, means necessary the highest score wins um Football is the world's most popular ball game in numbers of participants and spectators. So that's a pretty interesting point, right? Most popular game in the world with the ball. All right, let's keep going here. Um, lots of different places that we can play this game. Um, and interesting, 250 million people um, played football with about 1.3 billion interested. And in again, just finding these interesting points. Million soccer players with 1.3 billion interested. 
So hopefully as you're doing this for yours, um, you are finding some interesting um, some interesting information. This is actually a fairly short article because it's all can kind of contained um, down here. But we get some we get some reassuring things here. Modern football originated in Britain in the 19th century. So um, a similar idea to what we had in the first one um, originated in 18. Hundreds England. Oops, wrong one. Wrong one again. Uh, going down. <clears throat> um, it was a winter game. Okay, that's interesting because it's definitely not a winter game anymore. And each one had their each school had their own rules. Um, so the first rules were tried to standardize. They made made a set of rules in eighteen forty three. So first set of standard rules in 1843. And again, notice I'm not trying to get everything that's in here because we're not trying to make this um, too big here. All right. And then we have this idea that the game of rugby um, came out of the game of football. So soccer led to the game of rugby. Um, and cause the term association football, which we saw there earlier, the newly formed football association. So they kind of segregated um, those two things. So that was part of the rules happening there as people adjusted their, their version of football. Um, and aligned with the rules, this is what happened. And then we start to have um, teams from different parts of England um, joining together to play games. Um, it looks like 1877, um, they had their first um, agreed upon uh, set of rules and then they had 43 teams that were competing in that um, 1877 so organized soccer rules teams and competition in england so we're getting we're getting a lot of history um from england as we do this part here um and again we can we can go down this for for quite a while here um if we want to see everything going on but we really don't want to see everything going on again about one page that's what we're trying to trying to get to here um, all right, I'm going to look at the last one here quickly. This is on, again, National Geographic. Um, and we see some things that we've already seen. Um, by far the world's most popular sport by at least 265 million people worldwide, although the other number that we saw uh, actually said it was 1.3 billion. So that's an, that's an interesting difference that we have just found in our research. So we'll probably have to note something about that. We do our, our uh, final paper here. Interestingly, their number is much closer to the players than it is to those interested. So I wonder if there's some connection um, there. So they use the word beloved, so I'm not sure what exactly they mean. Um, okay, and we keep going down. If you're looking for the earliest ancestors of this, um, we're going to see that the Chinese again are going to show up here. We're the ones that were kicking balls into the sports in the third century BC. So that is a important similarity that we found. Um, first kicking game happened in, in third century BC. So um, again, if I were to go back here and start highlighting these things as I was doing before um, to get similar thing, similar ideas going together, um, I can certainly do that. So I might take this whole line here and actually make this green to connect with this idea right here that is also green. And this was in yellow before. Um, so hopefully what you see are some, some common themes um, getting organized here. Um, standard rules here, really organized way of doing things right here. Um, so all these bold things are kind of working together. Again, I have England, 
constantly showing up in my notes. Um, so again, what you should hopefully see is again, this, this idea of common ideas occurring. And we're just, we're using our notes to really show that, to really connect these ideas together. Um, so I hope that gives you the idea. I can, I can obviously continue to go on and do this and I will off, um, off the video and share this document with you guys so you can see it. Um, but for right now, I hope that gives you enough to go on to start doing your research. Um, again, you want to start with at least three resources after you've picked your topic and then take the time this week to do, do some notes on that. So you might do, um, you know, one resource a day and pick three days to do that. If you do that, it should only take you, I would think 15, 20 minutes to, to put together your notes for each one of them. Um, so hopefully that gives you again, not an overbearing amount of work to work to have to look at this week. Um, and then the only other thing for this week is to make sure that you continue your online learning journal. So keep, keep thinking about and keep, um, writing about how this learning process is going for you. Um, again, this is a really important thing called metacognition, and it's a, a strategy that's shown to really help you learn. Um, and so if we're thinking about our learning throughout the week, um, that should, one, improve what you're learning right now in your classes, help you remember those things better, and two, help you become better online learners for the future. Because again, any of you guys that are going to go on to college, um, you're going to have online classes in the future. So learning how to do this well is, a, is something that should really benefit you in, in your, your future academic careers. So um, I will have two Zooms this week. So please feel free to come on by the Zooms to, to talk about and look at um, what we're doing for this assignment. And I'm happy to help you guys any way possible by helping you find resources or walking you through creating the notes. Um, just come on by, say hi, and we will make sure we're working on it and getting it done. All right, guys, have a good rest of the, the day, and I will talk to you guys soon.